Welcome viewers to the third segment of the second lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of uh, general relativity. So um, in this segment, we are going to discuss first smooth map between two manifolds. Smooth map between two manifolds. A map F from N to M is C infinity at a point P in N if there is a chart V comma psi in M containing F of P and a chart U comma P in M containing containing P such that the composition psi composed with F composed with phi inverse a map from an open set of R to the N to R to the M is C infinity at phi of P. Okay, let me draw a picture for this definition of smooth map between two manifolds. Let this denote the manifold N and this figure denote manifold M. A uh, point P is contained in an open set U. Okay. And the image of P, so there is this map F from manifold N to manifold M. So the image of P under F being F of P, which is contained in this open set V. Okay. All right. Since N is a manifold, there exists this homeomorphism because U comma phi is a chart for N, right? So there is this homeomorphism phi from u to phi of u being an open set in r to the n r to the n so here is phi of u this is phi of u similarly V comma psi is is a chart in M. Therefore, psi is the homeomorphism from D to R to the M, right? R to the M. Psi of V is the open set in R to the M. To which V is mapped under the homeomorphism psi. Okay. So now, if this is phi, then this is phi inverse, right? from phi of u to u. So, this map 
is nothing but psi composed with f composed with phi inverse okay which is of course a map from phi of u being a subset of so let me write it properly phi of u contained in r to the n to to r to the m right okay so f from n to m is said to be c infinity at the point p if this this map from an open set of r to the n to r to the n is c infinity at the point phi of p okay so here now so in in such situations the knowledge of multivariable calculus turns extremely handy okay so that's why we need to know how we do calculus in r to the n okay so uh, the the smoothness of this map between these two manifold is described by the smoothness of a map from r to the n to r to the n and we all know how smoothness of map is described in the context of functions of several variables from our knowledge of multivariable calculus okay good now we will we will express um, tangent vector to a curve defined on a manifold at a given point Okay. as a linear combination of basis tangent vectors on the given tangent space okay so let's try to do it okay so now we need to fix a few notations for that i being an open interval of the real line R containing the point zero containing zero in R okay now tangent vector tangent vector at a point P in M through a curve, a curve lambda from this open interval I to the, a given manifold M. Okay. Okay. So recall the definition of the partial derivative of a function on a manifold, which was like this, right? was defined as del over del x nu evaluated at a phi of p and the function to differentiate is f composed with phi inverse okay we already discussed it in the previous segment good where p belongs to the chart u comma phi of f okay now we consider 
and open set u of n and we already know that p is so we don't know that p is in u we also demand that p is contained inside uh, p is a uh, p belongs to u and u comma phi be a chart okay also let like we have written down here also let lambda from i to u okay contained in m the manifold the underlying manifold be a curve given by t map to lambda of t without loss of generality assume that lambda at zero is equal to the point P this point okay so let me draw a picture again this is the real line okay and this is the the origin of the real line that is contained inside this open interval i and lambda is a map from which which maps i to to a curve on the manifold m and we want this curve say so this is the curve and this is the point p which is precisely lambda of zero okay so this is the tangent vector to the to manifold m which also goes through this curve lambda okay in other words this this tangent this is the tangent vector to the curve lambda lying on the manifold and we want this curve to be the image of lambda to be contained inside this open set u of the manifold m okay good this is u and in this situation it is described here that we want lambda of t to be contained inside this open set u this is the manifold m good so let me keep this picture and erase this this writing now we are interested in finding the tangent vector x at p to the curve t map to lambda of t okay so this is the curve in terms of elements of the domain and codomain and uh, x restricted to p is supposed to be the tangent vector to this curve contained in in the open set u of n as described in this figure okay so by by the definition of a tangent vector at a point on the manifold we know that it's a map it's a map from c infinity 
u comma r meaning that this is the space of smooth functions smooth real valued functions on open set u to the set of real numbers okay good now about notations f composed with phi inverse is a map from phi u to r okay where where phi is the underlying homeomorphism from u to r to the n okay good and phi composed with lambda okay is lambda takes i to u and phi takes u to r to the n so phi composed with lambda takes i to r to the n okay so so which means that this map has has n components because the image of this map will be uh, will be a vector in r to the n so that's why we write phi of lambda of t as an n component vector which we denote by x1 lambda of t x2 lambda of t all the way up to xn lambda of t okay good all right now what is f we have already assumed that f f is f is a function from smooth function from u to r okay so f belongs to this space right c infinity u comma r real valued smooth function on a neighborhood around p okay these objects in c infinity u comma r have special names called germs of functions in the neighborhood of p okay but we'll avoid these technicalities for the moment because it's not a math course it's a physics course so we we move forward and consider the map consider the following map f composed with lambda from i to r okay yeah so f is a map from u to r and lambda is a map from i to u so f composed with lambda is a map from i to r Okay, so now define x at p acting on f to be equal to d dt evaluated at t equal to 0. Remember that lambda of 0 was equal to p. Lambda of 0 is equal to p. So this is defined this way we are going to evaluate the derivative at the point t equal to 0 and we are going to derive f composed with lambda which is of course a function from i to r it's a very simple real valued function on the interval i and we know how to take the derivative of a, uh, uh, a single variable function okay, it's a single variable function f composed with lambda 
So this is going to be our definition of uh, of of the action of the tangent vector at p to to a function lying in the space. Okay, good. So let me erase. this figure. I think I don't need it anymore. So let me write, re rewrite the definition here. Um, d, dt evaluated at t equal to 0 and we are deriving f composed with lambda. Okay, so now, so how can we manipulate the right hand side of this expression f composed with lambda well this is nothing but actually d d t equal to 0 f of lambda of t right okay so now this can be rewritten as it can be manipulated as d d t t equal to 0, subject to t equal to 0, we insert this identity map between f and lambda, phi inverse composed with phi, we know that phi is a homeomorphism and you know, hence is invertible, okay, and now by applying chain rule, okay, f composed with lambda is a real valid function. On this interval i, so we can apply our knowledge of multivariable calculus that we learned in, in in lecture one. So we know the chain rule, and we apply chain rule here, and we see that we immediately can write it as, see, um, it will be uh, d d t at t equal to zero x mu of lambda of t, where we explain this notion notation here. Okay because we're separating these two functions. So go back to lecture one and, um, you know, have a look at the chain rule for real valued functions on interval, on, on a given interval, and you'll understand what we are doing here. We are taking this function and you know, writing it in terms of its components, right? And then it will get multiplied with, with this, with the derivative of this function, which is del del x mu, and this is going to be evaluated at right phi of lambda of zero, right? And we are going to derive this f composed with phi inverse because we know that this is a function from phi u to r and you know, uh, the, the points in phi u are, are given by uh, this, this, this x mu, okay? Because phi u is a point in r to the n, and you know, you, you designate a point in r to the n with, with x mu, mu running from 1 to n. Good. So that's why we are deriving phi composed with phi in f composed with phi inverse with respect to x to the mean, with respect to x x mean. Okay. So this is what we get by by applying ordinary chain rule from um, single variable calculus. Okay. Therefore, d dt at t equal to zero f composed with lambda is is nothing but del del x mu at phi of p because we already assume that lambda of zero is equal to p and we are going to derive um, f composed with phi inverse with respect to x mu times um, 
So this is ddd uh, of x mu lambda of t evaluated at t equal to zero. Okay. So here, as we have discussed in the first lecture, Einstein's summation convention is applied, meaning that we are going to sum this expression over all mu's. Okay, mu running from one to n. Good. So, so let me raise this part now. So we get, so now apply our knowledge of uh, partial derivative of a function on on an open set of the manifold that we discussed in the previous segment, x restricted to p acting on f is equal to, this guy can be written as del, del x mu at p acting on f times ddd at t equal to zero x mu of lambda t okay so just by changing the order of this expression we are going to write it as ddd t equal to zero x mu of lambda of t times del del x mu evaluated at b acting on f. Since f is arbitrary, these, in terms of their actions on smooth functions, in a smooth real valued functions on open set u, one can write uh, a, a vector function because on the left side we have a vector, tangent vector, and on the right side we also have a tangent vector. D, D, D t equal to zero x mu of lambda of t x mu of lambda of t composed with composed with uh, sorry uh, d d t at t equal to zero of x mu of lambda of t times del del x mu at p acting on f sorry there is no f okay so this this is what we have indeed indeed we have uh, the tangent vector written as a linear combination of the tangent vectors in tpm which we can see here so Therefore, any tangent vector, therefore we conclude that, therefore, any tangent vector, vector at P in M to the curve t map to lambda t can be written can be written as a linear combination linear combination of basis vectors del by del x1 at p all the way up to del by del x n at p of tpm okay the tangent space to the point p of the manifold m the coefficients the coefs of such linear combination 
are precisely this guy d d d at t equal to zero x mu coupled with lambda where mu runs from 1 2 all the way up to m okay so now it's time to discuss relationship between coordinate bases let's discuss it so let me raise everything so we are going to discuss relationship between coordinate bases coordinate bases okay so let phi which we denote by this n w the components of this um, homeomorphism actually and phi prime which we denote by the component functions x prime 1 x prime 2 all the way up to x prime n b2 charts b2 charts defined in, in a neighborhood of t for example u and b then for any smooth function, for any smooth function defined in the neighborhood of P, okay. so by definition of smooth function. Uh, by definition of uh, partial derivative of a smooth function on an open set of manifold we know that del del x mu at p acting on f is equal to del del x mu evaluated at phi of p f composed with phi inverse right we already defined it in the second segment and we are going to massage this this expression on the right hand side into the following del del x mu at phi of p and f composed with phi prime inverse composed with phi prime composed with phi inverse okay okay so now a few notations are in order we need to explain a couple of things First, this function. So, so obviously, we are going to use chain rule here for for function of several variables. But before that, we need to understand these functions. Okay. So, phi prime composed with phi inverse is a map from phi of u intersected with v which is of course a subset of r to the n to phi prime of u intersected with b v which is a function of r to the n okay so in other words phi prime composed with phi inverse is a map from an open set of r to the n to an open set of R to the n. Okay. And what about f composed with phi prime inverse? That is going to be a function from phi prime of u intersected with b, of course, which is a subset of r to the n to r. Okay. Here, u comma phi and d comma psi 
are charts of M with P in U intersected with P. Okay. Good. Um, recall that F is a map from U intersected with B, which is an open subset of M, and F is a function from U intersected with V to R, that is F, you can write the same thing as F being in this, this space, C infinity U intersected with V comma. Okay. Now, phi prime composed with phi inverse. Well, phi inverse is going to act on a point here, right? So this is an open subset of R to the N. So it's going to act on an n-tuple given by x1, comma, x2, comma, xn. Okay. Because phi is given by this. Okay. So now this is this is something that we denote so you see that now we are in you know uh, phi prime acting at a point we will we'll spit out a vector with these components right which we denote because of because of this x prime one which will of course be a function of this old n coordinates x1 x2 all the way up to xn and the new second coordinate x prime 2 which is going to be a function of the old coordinates x1 x2 all the way up to xn and finally all the way up to x prime n which is of course a function of this old coordinates x1 x2 all the way up to xn good this is phi prime composed with phi inverse. Okay. Fine. Now, let me erase this bar. Now, therefore, with all these notations fixed, now we are going to find this expression f composed with phi prime inverse composed with phi prime composed with phi inverse okay and this is according to the chain rule okay according um, to the chain rule so th these are the two functions so we, we already have seen that the components of this function is um, are given by these expressions, right? So this is going to be equal to first of all del del x mu, and it's going to be evaluated at phi of p because this guy is going to act on phi of p, right? And we are going to derive with respect to del, with respect to x mu, derive what? Derive uh, x prime mu. These components, okay? X prime mu, and th this gets multiplied with um, the derivative of f composed with phi prime inverse with respect to with respect 
so f composed with f prime inverse this expression look at this phi prime u intersected with b which is a subset of r to the n to r right so this guy is going to be so so the components of this functions this function are given by x prime mu or x prime mu okay so this function is going to be derived with respect to del x prime mu right and this is going to be evaluated at phi prime of phi inverse of phi of p. Okay, have a look at the the first lecture. The change rule part and then you will understand if you forget. Okay, so now um, let us rewrite this expression in the following form. This is going to be equal to, so it can be written as del x prime mu, del x mu and evaluated at phi of p, right? Good. And this guy is nothing but, this is just phi prime of p, right? So this is del by del x prime mu evaluated at phi prime of p uh, the derivative of this guy right f composed with phi prime inverse okay good let me erase this part now good and now so we know fr from the definition of the partial derivative of a function on an open set of manifold we can rewrite it as phi of p times del by del x prime mu at p acting on f. Okay. This is what. So the left hand side is actually del del x mu. F, right okay so since the the function was arbitrary we can write this as del del x mu at p is equal to del del x prime mu del del x mu at phi of p times del del x prime mu evaluated at p Okay, so you see that this is one basis in TPM and this is another basis at TPM. So the change of basis formula is given by this expression. Okay, good. Now recall one thing. Recall that how we write a, an arbitrary tangent vector as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So invoking that formula this is a number and these are the basis vectors in the old coordinates okay unprimed coordinates so now using this formula just substitute this del over del x mu at 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 the point p substitute for this expression from here in this expression we get x mu of p del del x prime mu del x mu evaluated at phi of p okay times del by del x prime mu evaluated at p okay but this is supposed to be this this vector is is the same vector so this vector is supposed to be 
x prime mu at p del f del over del x prime mu p right they have to be the same because it's the same tangent vector x at p okay so which means that this guy has to be equal to this guy right from which we see that x prime mu at p has to be equal to del x prime mu over del x mu evaluated at phi p times x mu at p. So this is how the coefficients of the linear combination change under change of basis. Okay, physicists call these vectors contravariant vectors. So under change of basis or under change of charts, actually under change of charts because we should not say under change of basis because you know we are working on a manifold. But th things are happening locally so we can also call change your basis but you know the the this this these coefficients which are the components of this tangent vector they transform this way under uh, uh, under a change of charts or under a change of coordinate system okay so they are actually components of the tangent vector not the tangent vector themselves. Tangent vector stays the same. X at P stays the same. But under change of coordinates, their components change. And this the change happens in this way. Okay. Having a look at this transformation, physicists will say uh, physicists will say that this is a contravariant vector because it follows this transformation rule. Okay. But it is important to note that here Einstein's summation convention is applied, meaning that mu, this expression is summed over all mu, mu running from 1 to n. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for, for lecture 2. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll first try to give you a, a very elementary flavor of covectors from the linear algebra point of view. And then I'll try to develop the idea of vector field and one form, okay, very briefly. And then, you know, the way we we expanded the expanded the the, the tangent vector as a linear combination of a basis tangent vectors, okay, basis vectors. In the similar way, we will try to do it, do the same for covectors at a given point on the manifold, okay? And then we'll see how, um, how a general covector, components of a general covector transform under, um, under coordinate transformation. Once we'll be equipped with the, with the concept of transformations of contravariant vector and covector, we'll apply our knowledge on this transformations into uh, the transformation of general uh, tensors, and we'll have uh, the idea of tensor fields uh, in, a, in a more general setup in the context of the manifold. Thank you for attending the second lecture.